Pricing your artwork can be so confusing, but I'm going to show you how I have been doing it for the last few years. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I create drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. The artwork in the background of this video is a cat that I recently completed in pastels, just so that you have something interesting to look at while I explain my pricing structure to you. If you did want to see a full length real term tutorial of this guy, you can head over to my Patreon channel using the link in the description. If people are starting to take an interest in your artwork, then it may be time to think about prices. Someone may have asked to buy some of your artwork or wants you to do a commission for them, but how do you know how much to charge? There are so many ways that you can price your artwork, like adding up the cost of your supplies and how many hours you spent, or you could price your work by the size of the artwork, or you could even just choose an amount that you feel comfortable with without thinking about the hours spent or the cost of your supplies or anything like that. I'm not here to tell you which way is right for you, and I'm definitely no expert with pricing artwork, but I'm going to show you how I price my own artwork. The first thing that I do is work out how many hours I spend on my artwork on average, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but having a rough idea will be really important for the next step. I then take the size of my artwork using linear inches. Linear inches just means that you're adding the measurement of the top edge and one of the side edges. This sounds confusing, but here's an example. If you had a piece of artwork that was 8 inches by 10 inches, then you would just add 8 and 10 together, which is obviously 18. So your artwork is 18 linear inches. Now that we have this number, we're going to choose a base number that we're going to multiply that with. So for example, I'm going to choose the number 10 as my base number. So 18, which was the linear inches of your artwork, times 10 is 180. So that means that the price of my artwork is going to be $180 for an 8 inch by 10 inch piece. Then for other sizes, you can do the exact same thing. So you just have to find out what the linear inch is first. So for a 9 by 12 piece, it would be 21 linear inches. And then you just multiply that by your chosen base number, which was 10 in this case. So 21 multiplied by 10 is $210. So my 9 inch by 12 inch artwork would be $210. This formula is really easy to use, especially if you create artwork in random sizes that are not a normal standard size. For example, if you did a really long piece of artwork, like an 8 inch by 20 inch, which isn't a standard size, you could still work out how much that would be with the same formula. By the way, that's not the actual number that I use on my own artwork, it's just an example. If you work in multiple different mediums like I do, it might be a good idea to price them differently as well. For example, I charge more for mediums that take a little bit longer in comparison to some of the quicker mediums. In that case, I would use a different base number for each medium. For example, I might use 10 for coloured pencil and pastel, but I might only use 8 for graphite and watercolour pieces. For example, an 8 inch by 10 inch pastel piece would be $180, but a watercolour piece of the same size might only be $144. I don't do commissions anymore, but when I did do commissions, I used a higher base number as well. So instead of $180 for a pastel piece, a commission might be $220. The reason that I charge more for commissions in comparison to my own artwork is because I don't have as much creative freedom as if I were to create my own choice of artwork and I can't use the commission to make prints of or anything like that. I'm creating a piece of artwork specifically for one person and the communication back and forth between this customer also takes a lot of time as well and you may need to make adjustments based on their opinion. Those are the reasons why I used to charge more for commissions than my own artwork. When you're working out which base number to use, make sure that you test a few different sizes with that equation to make sure that your total amount is not too low. And that's the reason why you want to know roughly how long you're spending on your artwork. If you spend 20 hours on an 8 inch by 10 inch piece, and you're using the number 10 as your base number, 
then that means that you're only getting paid $9 per hour and that doesn't include the cost of your materials. So you may want to increase your base number to a higher number to make sure that you're at least getting minimum wage. It's totally up to you how much you think your artwork is worth, but I would try to stick to a modest amount to start with. Then you could always increase your prices if your artwork is selling well, because it's not ideal to have to lower your prices because you started with a really high price to begin with. I usually increase my prices every six months or one year, depending on how I feel I'm going. To increase my prices, I just increase my base number slightly. I may only add one or two numbers or even increase as little as half. So my base number might increase to 10.5 or 11. That way you can increase your prices just a little bit, but more often. So my eight inch by 10 inch piece might start at $180. Then six months later, it might go up to $200 because I increased my base number slightly. Also keep in mind that the more experienced you get as an artist, you may find that you complete your artwork much quicker than you did when you first started. This doesn't mean that you should reduce your prices at all. It just means that you've acquired the skill and the knowledge and you've put in those hours of time into your craft to get to this point. A beginner artist might spend a lot more time on a piece of artwork, so the price of that artwork might equate to minimum wage per hour. But as you get quicker, it basically means that your hourly rate is going to be higher. So I hope that makes sense. If you're just starting out and trying to work out how to price your artwork, just remember to take into account how long you're spending on your artwork, the cost of your materials, and make sure that you're covering those with your prices. Your skill as an artist is worth more than you think. It takes many hours to learn everything you need to know to produce something that people want to pay for, just like any other profession. Remember that these people are coming to you to buy your artwork because they can't do it themselves. They enjoy looking at your artwork and you have a skill that is worth paying for. Again, I want to mention that this is what I do personally. It's definitely not the only way to do it and it may not even be the best way for you personally, but it gives you something to work with if you're really unsure about where to start. I have another tutorial in the top left hand corner that I think you might find useful so click on that and I'll see you over there.